Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, the plot thickens as more women come forward about the man Anna thought she was in love with. She says that you brought her into your family, you got her to give you money, and she knows at least five other women that you got to give you money. Is that true? No, 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 no. She says you're lying. I don't know. I don't know any lady. You have evidence that this man has scammed other women, correct? Yes. I hope you hear me, because you are an evil scammer. I don't hear you. She says you are an evil scammer. I never just know this lady before. Let's do it. Not a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. For the past two days, I've been talking to Anna, her son Nino, and his fiancée Alexandria, uncovering the truth behind Anna's alleged online boyfriend, Sammy Lee Strong. Now yesterday, we found the real man behind the photos of Sammy Lee Strong, who confirmed he was neither critically ill nor stuck in Africa. Now Khaled is the man behind the photos of Sammy Lee Strong. He claimed he did not know Anna and he was merely a victim of identity theft. However, in an unexpected turn of events, during our investigation, my team came across a woman named Kathy who runs a scam awareness Facebook page. She claims that Khaled wasn't telling the entire truth. I also spoke to another woman, Samantha, who says Khaled actually scammed her and there were striking similarities between his behavior and the behavior of the fictional Sammy Lee Strong who he says had stolen his identity. This was definitely a Dr. Phil first. Take a look. Dr. Phil, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Anna says her boyfriend, Sammy Strong, used to live down the street until he moved to Nigeria three years ago. I knocked on the doors of several of the homes in this close-knit neighborhood, including the one that Sammy Strong told Anna was his. The owner of that home declined to speak on camera I spoke with one neighbor who agreed to appear on camera. Have you ever seen this man before? No. I've lived here for 12 years. All the neighbors on the street, it's, a, it's all black. So somebody of a different race or ethnicity would definitely stand out. He never owned the house at that address. His, his name never appeared on, on, on the documents for that house. He never lived there. That's all a lie. Well, Anna says she wants my help getting her boyfriend, Sammy Lee Strong, out of detention in Nigeria. Well, ask and you shall receive. We found the man in the photos. I'm happy to report that Sammy Lee Strong is in fact not critically ill. He's not in Nigeria either. My name is Khaled. I am born in Lebanon. My age is 55 years old. I have a wife and four boys. Well, joining us all the way from Beirut, Lebanon, via satellite, uh, this is the man that you have been told is Sammy Lee Strong. How do you feel looking at the man that you have believed to be someone else? It's, it's just sad. No, see, I fell in love with this man. He has a wife and a family. A Google image search of Sammy's photo led us to a website where Khaled's photo appeared 370 times. Well, if you can believe it, there is actually a lot more to this story. While my team was searching to find the man behind the photos, they came across Kathy, who runs a worldwide Facebook scam alert page. Kathy says she has known about Khaled for the past eight years. Now, I asked my team to kill the feed to Khaled, so he's not listening right now. I'd like to add Kathy into this conversation, who is joining us now from the Canary Islands. I know women who have met him, who went to Tripoli in Lebanon, 
to meet him, to give him money. I know that he got together with the boys from Nigeria to give him the pictures, to give the, those, those young men pictures to, and taught him how to scam. Kathy actually led us to Samantha, who says she was personally scammed by Khaled. Samantha is on the phone because she really doesn't want to show her face. Tell us what your experience has been uh, with Khaled. He's, 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 he appears to be a great man, a charmer, a charming man, but uh, he will invite you into his family and then ask you for money. He got money from you? Yes, he's had about 2,000 pounds from me. And you've been to Lebanon to see him on four yeah, different occasions, correct? Him. The last time I went was in February this year. But now... I absolutely... I've got nothing but contempt for the man. I know of at least five women who I've spoken to who he has taken money of them himself personally and not gone through as a, a false name. So, Kathy, do you suspect that he may be at least coaching the people that are interacting, dealing with Anna here as Sammy Lee Strong? Yes, of course. Now, uh, he's not been listening, but we're going to add him back to the conversation right now. Khaled, thank you for being patient. Do you know a, a woman from England named Samantha? Yes, I know. Because we've been talking to Samantha, and Samantha tells us that she feels like you have been a scammer with her. There is a woman by the name of Katharina in the Canary Islands in Spain that she has evidence that you have been training Nigerian boys uh, to use your pictures to scam people around the world into sending money and that you get a, a cut of the money that they send in. I don't know Katrina before. Do you train Nigerian boys on how to scam women on the internet? Even, even, even my my photo, uh, my Facebook. I don't know how how I can do something. Sometimes I talk my my son to help me. The Samantha is my friend. Well, she's on the phone right now. Samantha, are you his good friend? <laughs> Not really. No. Did he take advantage of you, Samantha? Absolutely. How? Using me for money taking advantage, brought me into his family, promised me everything and gave him nothing. Yeah, Khaled, you heard Samantha, right? She said you brought her into your family, you promised her everything, took money from her and gave her nothing. Please, uh, let, I don't hear what Samantha talk. Well, Samantha, say it again. I've said, Khaled, that you brought me into your family, took advantage of me, made me feel part of your family, and then asked me for money. And I gave you money. And you know very well I did. And I know at least five of the women that's given you money and you've denied every single one of those Hello. women. She says that you brought her into your family, you got her to give you money, and she knows at least five other women that you got to give you money. Yes. How, how, I, how I, I use Samantha money, how I take money if don't they help me, as they said before, she told me, you know me, I am still without work long time. And she told me, I am like support for you. And when she coming in Lebanon, I do the best thing for her. I make my car for her as a driver. And I, I open my house and open my father's house. And I am with her and I respect this lady too much because she's a very, very good lady in my life. She says she knows five other women you've gotten to give you money. Is that true? Absolutely, yes. No, 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 no. Oh, don't lie, Khaled. She says you're lying. Give me one lady, give me one lady and let I'm her to know me. Yes, I told you, no. Samantha, she helped me. I told you, she helped me without force. Another no, I, lady, I, I don't know. Names, I don't know Khaled. any lady. I respect them. They have asked me not to give names and I will not don't give any know. names, Khaled. But you know I know them. I've spoken to them. That is not an excuse anymore. All right, Kathy, are you there? Yes. Uh, you have evidence that this man has scammed other women, correct? Yes. Can you hear Kathy all right? Khaled, can you hear Kathy? You are a so scammer. 
I hope I hope you hear me. Because you are an evil scammer. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Please uh, increase her voice. That is Kathy, and she says you are an evil scammer. How? If I don't know you, I don't hear. I don't, don't hear. I never know you. This lady. I never know this lady before. I don't. I don't know the name also for this lady. I don't have this name before. Well, sorry, sorry. Uh, what is name? Coco. Her name is Katharina, ah. and she says you are an evil scammer, excuse and she me, runs a website you. that so investigates these things, and she knows several women that say you have scammed them out of money. Correct, Kathy? Yes, correct. Uh, yes, we're going to take does. a break, and we'll see if we can work this out. A woman who was scammed out of her retirement savings and what she has to say to Anna after the break. First, he had told me that he was short some money for some diamonds he purchased, so I sent him $27,500. A few days later, he asked me for $18,000 more. I'm just a, a very trusting person. My next guest, Connie, has been watching backstage and can unfortunately relate to Anna's story all too well. Back in 2018, Connie says she met a man online named Johnston Conti, who claimed he was a diamond dealer living in the next town over. Was it too good to be true? Well, Connie says she had initial suspicions about Johnston, but was looking for companionship. And his stories even checked out, so she thought. What she found, unfortunately, was a lot different than what she imagined. I was scammed out of almost $100,000 by someone I had met online. My husband suddenly passed away in 2017. After he was gone, I was looking for some companionship. I met a man online. Uh, he called himself Johnston County. He told me he was a diamond distributor and he traveled to mines all over the world. First, he had told me that he was short some money for some diamonds he purchased, so I sent him $27,500. A few days later, he asked me for $18,000 more, and then he was short about $60,000, and I only had $48,000 left, and so I sent him that because he said he was detained at the airport. I thought they were loans. He wrote promissory notes saying that he would pay back with interest. Got suspicious and I just decided to call the police. They said there is no such person. I'm just a, a very trusting person and I just ignored all the red flags. I wanted to prevent it from happening even to just one person. So I reached out to Dr. Bill because he's got a voice, he's got power, and most of all, he's got credibility. So. I wanted to get the word out, and if any way we can prevent this, let's do so. Well, Connie, it's so good to see you. Thank you, Dr. Phil. And uh, you've been listening to Hello. our conversation yes. with Anna, and you have been down that road. I've been there and done that, yes. And what do you want to say to Anna? <sighs> well, I was getting emotional back there because I really felt for you. I, I know how it's been, and I know not only the journey that you're going on, but what you're gonna go through. Right now, you have two roads, just two roads. One of those roads right now is you can continue on the path that you're taking, and you can lose the rest of your money. You could take out mortgage, you could take out loans, you could lose everything, and even your family. And then you'll, you'll be brokenhearted. The other road is you could stop now and you'll still be brokenhearted. But at least you stopped and you still have your family. But there is no other road. There isn't that road with Sammy, with the love and with all of the promises because those are just empty promises. Somebody that loves you is not going to want to be taking money from you. They want you to be safe and secure. They're going to want, to want you to keep your money, every dime of it. And it was only until the time when he asked me for a loan. 
And I thought, I just gave you all of my retirement savings, and now you're asking me for a loan? You're supposed to love me, and you want me to take out money? And he swore, well, as soon as I get back in a couple of days. And I said, but you keep saying that. And I thought, well, this is too much, so I had to go to the police. We found the man in that photo, and he was in Austria in that picture. But he's here today. missed a lot of red flags along the way, right? I and, missed a lot. And you and, know what? I knew that they were red flags. And yet there were so many things that he said. And he was so loving and so kind and almost like, and this was the first red flag, he was the perfect man. <laughs> and I don't think that exists. Sorry, Dr. Phil, you may not agree, but... <laughs> He, he was just too perfect. He would never want to argue. And then the police came and they said, this person doesn't exist. So the first thing I did was I went to the bank and I closed my accounts and opened up new ones. Then I went to his house where he supposedly lived because he lived right in the next town. I went to his house and he didn't live there. When you look back, 2020, it's it's really clear. But at the time, sure. it, it's hard to see. And it was hard for Anna to see as well. Well, after Connie learned that she was scammed, she sent this photo of Johnston to a friend from Germany to see if he recognized the scenery. Uh, she says she had a feeling the man behind the photos of Johnston was European and was curious for any information about the man she thought she loved. Well, Connie says her friend revealed Johnston's photo was taken in Austria, but other than that, she doubts he has any knowledge about his photos being used. Well, it turns out Connie's friend was right, and maybe we should give him a job because we found the man in that photo, and he was in Austria in that picture. Huh. However, he's not European, and his name isn't Johnston, but he's here today. We believe he is a victim of having his identity stolen as his photos are being used online without his knowledge or consent. So, Ron, come on out. <laughs> Ron, come on out. It's so good to see you. Nice to see you, Dr. Phil. And I'm so sorry that your photos have been taken and used and people have been exploited, but what did you want to say to Connie? I, I'm a victim just as well, and I'm sorry whatever happened happened to you, but uh, and learning about all of this catfishing and different things going on, I pulled up one of my pictures through reverse imaging, and it's been used over... Uh, 55 times. What is it like to actually see the man that you thought was someone else and, and... I'm really surprised, I have to say, I'm really surprised. I knew it wasn't you that I was speaking to. And, and the more I looked at uh, the online dating sites and would go through profiles, I would see your picture come up yeah. with different names. Yes. But there's your, I'm like, there he is again, there he is again. And even that picture from Austria in the background. Yes. Another one validating that, you know, this really wasn't him. It couldn't possibly be. And, you know, Ron is, is very happily married, and you've been married how long? Uh, two years, May 19th. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And um, he's not at all involved in this. You know that. He's, as he said, he's been victimized so many times. And it's interesting to look at the similarities uh, between Sammy Lee Strong and Johnston Conti. Uh, both were met online, both claimed to be widowed, both had very vague info, never video chatted because you know, they can steal the pictures, but they can't you know, actually get on camera and talk because it's not who they are. They both said they worked overseas, both said they had been detained. 
both owed money, so needed help financially, had associates that you could send money to when they were detained, uh, had money delivered to different locations. I mean, it's just the same pattern. These guys have a playbook. The typical patterns of excuses online love scammers use, uh, they're arrested, hospitalized, sick, have sick children, uh, money, credit cards stolen, frozen bank accounts, shipwrecked. Relatives are usually dead, so you can't track anybody down. They're usually younger, really attractive persona. Uh, they're poetically romantic. They're lost or stolen passports, expired visas or passports. They're beaten up on the way to the airport. They're stuck in foreign countries until taxes are paid. They're widowed, no face-to-face, -face, poor grammar, fake documents, Photoshop pictures, expecting large amounts of money, and they have these, these terrible sob stories. And Anna, when we look at your story and go through and say, you know, just how many of these things were used in the story with you, and we check those off, boy, it's just all over the chart when we go through, look at all of the hits of, of what they used out of their playbook uh, in the story. They used all of these elements uh, in the story to get to you and, and, and sell the story. So you can see that's the typical things they say, and they used all of those things with you and with you having stolen his picture. Anna, I don't want there to be any doubt in your mind as to whether this is a real person or not a real person. Anna, this is a, a major turn of events for you. And look, not something that I take pleasure in because I know this is a disappointment for you. And I, I don't like to disappoint you in any way whatsoever. So tell me what you're thinking and feeling right now. I feel, of course, very disappointed, hurt, um, and yet, on the other hand, I, I'm, I'm glad it's, I can make now different decisions. I can go forward. I don't have to deal with this anymore. It's going to be over. Yeah. And Listen, I, I know that this leaves a void. I mean, you, you mourn the loss of this relationship as though it's a real person because you had a lot of emotion invested in this. Yes, and I, I, yes. Listen, I get that. It's like, this is like someone died. It's like someone you cared about a lot uh, left you and, and went away. It, it, they just went away in a different sense in that they didn't exist. And you can feel like, uh, you know, I was, I was a fool, I was taken in, I was used and abused in this way. Uh, and you always feel violated when that happens. You have real people in your life, real people in your world that love you and care about you. And they're there every day. And they've loved you every day. They've been fighting for you every day. They could have just said, oh yeah, whatever, and gone on. They didn't do that. They're here because they love you and care about you. You're not alone in this world. You finally don't have to choose between us and him. He constantly put you in that yeah. position to where you never, you stopped coming around for so long because of him. You would come and see the kids and me. You, re you replaced my mom, man. And when he turned you against us, it broke me. I felt alone. Now you can come back and do the family dinners and stay with us. Stop trying to hide stuff. You know, they have their life. <laughs> and I, you know, I want to kind of have somebody for myself to have coffee over in the morning, you know? Sure. And, and just have a, you know, go to the park together, me and my, him and my dog, and, oh, you know, just kind of enjoy the, the, the winter of my life. Oh, I told you. And... And you know, I want that for you too, but you can have it here with somebody flesh and blood that 
you shouldn't have to hide and you shouldn't have to pay and you shouldn't have to be guilt-induced by somebody that cares about you. Now that this is over and you can look up and around, you, the horizons are gonna open up like you won't believe. There's plenty of fish in the sea, Mom. Just don't get a rotten one. When we come back, a shocking update from one of the most talked about past guests from last season. What happened after her episode aired after the break? At this point, there's approximately a half dozen women that I have a strong interest in. So you have a fraudulent passport and a fraudulent driver's license. Show me a document that's not fraudulent. If a man is supposed to be smart, he is dumber than most. You might remember my next guest from last season when she instantly became a Dr. Phil viewer favorite. The last time she was here, she sat on this stage with her ex-husband, Robert, who blew their million-dollar retirement fund on day trading and online love. Jeremy says because of Robert's actions, she was living in a small, rundown apartment and at 72 years old was still having to work full-time because... He had lost everything they had spent their life working to save for their years of retirement. I believe my ex-husband, Bob, has lost his mind. When we retired, he began to get involved in the day training. I had to tell her we lost everything. Our $1 million nest egg was gone. After 40 years of marriage, I file for divorce. At this point, there's approximately a half dozen women that I have a strong interest in. For a man who's supposed to be smart, he is dumber than most. In a perfect world, you would like somebody that's young, attractive, interesting, funny, exotic, and rich. Yes, that's possible. This lady is Jane. This is April. April and I are engaged. She's in the country of Tongo. I think in her particular case, I don't think she is scamming. This is Sophie Preston. She lives in the Modesto area in California. I've already said Sophie, about $10,000. Well, we did some sleuthing, and we found out some interesting things about Sophie Preston. You did look at her passport. Yes. And this is clearly fraudulent. The, 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 the lines down here are red. It's real clearly ones. fraudulent. This is her driver's license. Okay, you know this is fraudulent, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Okay, so she said you have a fraudulent passport and a fraudulent driver's license. Show me a document that's not fraudulent. Well, I don't have it on me. <laughs> you understand that your assistants were asking for information at a rapid fire rate over a lot of people in a very short period of time? You were busy being belligerent is the reason you were having trouble getting all your documents together. Is that a fact? Together. Yes, that is a fact. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Well, you're talking over me. Stop talking over me. If you want the answer, you're going to have to let me talk, okay? You are a loudmouth bully. You want to bully them, bully me, Buster. I have spent the last four years working myself crazy. I know. In order to be able to live. I know. Well, these women have seen your $8,000, your $4,000, your $10,000, your $19,000, and I haven't. Your point is, whatever he spent, whether it's $30,000, $50,000, $100,000, would make a huge difference in your life. It would. I don't have a home. I have an apartment. We used to have homes. Mm -hmm. I put things up on the wall, but they have to come back down. And that's the way the rest of my life is going to be. Well, joining us via Ionico is Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great, thank you. Well, it's good to see a smile on your face. Yes, it is. So tell me what's happened since you were here last. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all I can say is wow. Um, uh, can, I say, can I take just a second and say to Anna, thank you for having the response that you had to Dr. Phil's information to humbly accept the fact you were wrong for a while and now you can make things right. I wish that my ex-husband, Robert, could have had that humility, but he didn't. And as a result, the wonderful people 
who were watching Dr. Phil thought that maybe I should get a little payback for the things that had happened to me. And they, they opened their hearts, opened their pocketbooks, and over 1,500 people donated to me in a GoFundMe, and they donated $80,000. And then when the show re-aired, they gave another $20,000. So now I have $102,000. I have been able to buy a small house in a small town in Missouri, and I love it. I love it crazy lot. I love everything about it. I love that it's 110 years old. I love doing the lawn, doing working with the lawn and, and working outside and working inside, and I am so happy and I am so grateful. I mean, I. In my opinion, only God could have put the thing together where I went in for a uh, intervention with my ex-husband and came out with a house. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Jerry, I think that is just so great, and I've got the best viewers in the world, and I am so proud that that has worked out that way, and you don't have to live in a little apartment and taking stuff down off the wall and moving from one place to another, and you've got a house uh, that you can call home, and that will be yours from now on. So I am just so, so grateful that everybody has responded in the way that they have. And we take this very seriously, and, and we, we do take it seriously with you, Anna, and as I told you, I, I take no pleasure in delivering news that you don't want to hear, but I do take pleasure in helping kickstart your life going forward. And you're so blessed to have these people that love and care about you here. And, you know, don't look back, look forward, uh, just as Connie has, and, and just know that your, your life's ahead of you and put this behind you and, and just create some happiness in your life. I know it's there for you. Thank you. Okay, all right. Coming up, my next guest has an unusual hobby that has people seeing dollar signs. I'll explain when we meet her next. <music> Have you ever wondered if there's money out there just waiting for you to claim? Maybe an inheritance or cash left in an old account? Well, my next guest, Amy, has turned finding unclaimed money into a profitable hobby. But she says she could use some help finding her best self and confidence. Hi, this is Amy. I'm busy all the time. It's stressful working full time and juggling my family. It's wearing me down. I also have a very interesting hobby. I help return unclaimed property to people that didn't know they had it. The largest sum I helped return was $220,000. For myself, $16. <laughs> I'm definitely starting to see the signs of wear and tear on my skin. When I go into the office during the Zoom meetings, I see myself and I think, oh no, is that what I really look like? Growing up, we were out on the water. We were water skiing. We had lots of sunbathing. I did not use sun protection. I feel like I'm beginning to pay the price for not protecting my skin. What frustrates me most is wrinkles on my forehead, lines spreading down my cheek, my neck starting to show some age. If I can help people find money, I would love someone to help me find my youth. Well, live video calls have become a way of life for Amy. When she sees her reflection, she feels her appearance undermines her confidence. Now, joining me virtually is Dr. Sabrina Fabi, dermatologist and spokesperson for Rock Skin Care. Now, she has a solution that may help with Amy's confidence issue. So, Dr. Fabi, I understand Rock Skin Care heard about Amy and they wanted to lend her a hand. So, tell us about that. Yes. Amy's time in her youth being in the sun without sun protection has resulted in aging skin, which now is affecting her self-esteem. How were you able to help her? Seven weeks ago, Rock sent Amy their new retinol night serum capsules. We have a photo of Amy's skin before using the serum. 
you can see how prominent the wrinkles and lines are on her forehead. And a month after using the serum, we checked in with Amy. So let's take a look at this. I've been using this product from Rock. I uh, love it every night. I just take this capsule, put it into my fingers, and apply. I've seen an improvement in my skin. It feels softer, it feels tighter. It has a brightness to it and a firmness that I didn't have before. Okay, Amy, well, thanks for being here. Now, seeing yourself regularly on video chats is a lot different than in your mirror, right? It really is, Dr. Phil. In the mirror, I'm just fixing my hair or doing my makeup, and I feel like I look fine. But on the video calls, I feel like I look much older, and I worry that's the way other people see me. Well, now that you've been using the product for almost two months, what do you think? I am so surprised at the big difference in my skin. The wrinkles on my forehead have really smoothed out and my skin feels so much tighter and younger. Yeah, forehead and cheeks both, right? Yes. So looking at these uh, photos, the difference in Amy's skin is pretty impressive. I mean, it's really obvious. Dr. Fabi, tell us about this serum. The capsules contain a high concentration of retinol and antioxidants to fight wrinkles. In a clinical trial, 97% of the women who tried it had visibly smoother skin in one night. And those results just got better over time. And each capsule contains exactly the right amount of serum to apply each night. How have these results affected you? Well, seeing how much better my skin looks has really boosted my confidence and made me less concerned about how I look on the video calls. Yeah. And, you know, Amy, looking better does make you feel better. And the, the truth is, self-image and body image shouldn't vary together. So if you feel good about your presentation physically, your, your self-image overall does go up. So when you feel good about how you present, how you come across, then your confidence goes up, your ability to present goes up, the, the, the confidence in your language, everything goes up together. So has this been true for you? Absolutely. Because my skin looks better, I feel younger, more energized. Yeah, so you can get after finding that money better, right? And Dr. Phil, I've got some news for you. You have over $3,300 in unclaimed money out there. Really? Yes. Well, I'm glad to hear that. If I can claim it, I will, I will take that money and I will donate it to our domestic violence charity when Georgia smiled. We, we have a shelter in Dallas, Texas and one in Oklahoma that can use those funds right away. So we'll send them straight out. So thanks for finding that. So Dr. Fabi, you, you have some news too. Amy, and you can find this product at Walmart for less than $25. But Rock wants you to continue improving your skin, so they are giving you a one-year supply. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Thank you. Well, hey, we both made out white bandits today, right? So <laughs> yes. that's a good thing. I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Dr. Sabrina Fabi. How would you like to be part of our virtual audience? You could join me from anywhere in the world. All you need is a computer, with a camera and a high-speed internet. Uh, for all the details, just go to drphil.com and click on Be Part of the Audience. Scroll down to Reservations and fill out the form. Be sure to follow me on TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you definitely want to subscribe to Robin's podcast, I've Got a Secret with Robin McGraw. Not only does she share secrets, but she chats with some of the world's most powerful and talented people and she gets them to share secrets that put them where they are. You do not want to miss a single episode. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.
sometimes Memories can kill ya But I didn't hear ya mm -hmm. I thought that I could fly But woke up on the asphalt I swear there was the last time mm -hmm. I've always been naive Call it Don't. 